Okay. We're back at it with uh, the MacSense keyboard. And um, I've got it quite disassembled here. Um, and unfortunately, when I was pulling the keys um, with a proper whisk type key puller, um, a few of the actual switches pulled out. Um, the first one was F8 here, which I thought, oh, that's kind of a bummer, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, and then the next was um, left control, which is like, oh, that's not great. And then the last one was space, which is a problem. Um, and I, I, I don't know exactly why it happened, um, but um, they all broke a little bit differently. They each left one tail. Um, on the board and then there's a little bit left on each switch um, <clears throat> and I don't know if it's because this board was incredibly dirty it's not perfectly clean now but it's a lot cleaner and it's clean enough for me and um, I don't know if it's because of if like something got down in here on the board itself um, you know cause this is just a, a white plastic spacer that's sitting on top of the, the actual PCB um, that the switches clip into. So I don't know if something got on the board itself or what, but <sighs> unfortunately a couple of those pulled out. So <clears throat> I have a couple other keyboards that use um, Alps key switches that I could harvest from, um, but I don't really want to do that. Um, so what I am going to do is pull out F13, 14, and 15, which are keys that Max just, at least in the way I use Max, you don't use. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out these three switches. Um, go ahead and boot up the soldering iron here. Oh, I need to plug in the soldering iron. Um, pull out those three switches, um, clean up the holes for left control, F8, and space, and then if I can, I would like to park these three switches there. Um, but that may not actually be an option. Um, so, um, let's see, let's plug in the soldering iron. First things first. And switch that on, the venerable Hiko F888D. And then I'll probably need Tools here, so pull over the iFixit kit. Um, and my cat out. She wants to go out, open the door for her anyway. And I've got some fresh new solder here, um, as well as a fresh roll of desoldering wick. Um, so. And I do have a fan here going next to me to help with solder fumes, so hopefully that's not bad. Oh, this is interesting. So this is marked as an SMK8112JU I apostrophe Mac slash Power Mac G3 105 key. So we've got control here, spaces. This guy, then F8 is whoop, this guy. So everything else looks fine. The PCB looks fine. It's a little bit dirty, but that's okay. Grab my clippers. All right. These kind of boards are usually exceedingly easy to work on because it's just single layer, no big nasty ground plane or anything. As you can see without even really trying, um, the holes clean up really well, which is nice. I think you can buy um, 
like aftermarket ALP switches. Because thankfully they're not for any of the main keys, so it's not really a big deal. There's those guys. Let's get the space buffer. And I do have um, a tub of flux over there if I need it. Um, every once in a while when desoldering it, it helps to dip the, the braid in a little bit of flux. And one thing I do, some people don't, um, when the braid, whoops, when the braid gets kind of full, I'll clip it off. I know some people just keep pulling it out and soldering along, but I don't really like doing that. And you can get braid that has flux in it, which I think this stuff is actually coated with a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. It works well. I'm not a big fan of desoldering pumps like the spring loaded ones, and um, I don't do enough repair work or component harvesting to be able to justify getting one of the vacuum pump ones, so I'm pretty happy using Raid. Alright, that looks good. And we'll verify that let this go right here. And I just completely lost it. I should be more ready. And I'm doing this at a super, super awkward angle. I don't have really appropriate lighting or anything for this, so I apologize. I just thought it would be fun to share. Okay. Let's see. Everything's clear. There are our three little copper legs that are left. Or whatever they are. So now we want one, two, three. Pull those keys off. Some more fresh braid. And I'm not entirely certain if the keys are going to need any additional coaxing to come off. I don't think they'll just drop off, but I'm not sure what all they'll need to. and get the, the holes as soldered diminished as possible. Yeah, these little legs are bent over. Just need to kind of flick at them. Okay, so there's one. You can see what a mess it made of the braid. Or I made a mess of the braid.
these side cutters are not particularly sharp anymore. A little bit old. Oh, you know what? I was not supposed to have done that key. Whoops. Tack him back down then. I'm trying to remember the last time I did any board soldering. I I do little things like wiring harnesses and you know power connectors and fans um, all the time, but I don't remember the last time I did anything interesting like this. It's been a while, probably six months or so. supposed to be. Great. And a little bit of a burn on the top of my finger there from touching hot braid. And that's another reason that I like to trim it down. It, it cools so much faster if you don't give it all that thermal mass. Okay, so now you make sure those all look released, and they do. Let's try and just give each one of these a wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boop! Popped right out. Perfect. And give you a little wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boop! Popped right out. And a wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boop! Popped right out. Awesome. That is exactly what I wanted. So I have three keys wiggled free with nice, clean leads. Awesome. So set those aside and go ahead and put my old keys in. There's one. And I'm not going to bother soldering these in. Like I said, you know, this keyboard, so first off, it's going to be used on my Power Mac G3, blue and white, um, running OS 9. And unless you specifically configure them to be like shortcut keys or, um, you know, like program launchers or something, uh, you don't really need them. F keys that high, they're really there for like terminal emulation and maybe on the odd chance you want to use the keyboard on a PC or something. <clears throat> there is interesting history there going back for the old Apple extended keyboards. <laughs> okay. All right, so there are the old broken keys. And so they are there, there, there. And they just have one lead going through. I thought about trying to disassemble them and see if I could put them back together and make it work, but that's just too much effort. So now let's replace uh, control space F8. With new ones. We'll do the same thing here. I'll just pop it in loosely. Okay, that didn't go straight through, so let's pull it out. Oh, one of the legs bent. I was a little worried that might happen. And very graciously straighten it back out. There's not really much room to line this up. You just sort of... Are you serious? One went through and then the other laid flat. Come on, guys. I need everyone to be cooperative. Like that. Boom. Everyone is cooperative. 
I'm going to solder these in as I install them. Good. Grab another one. Let's try and make sure these are just perfectly straight. And um, I did check, they all seem to be the same type, so it's not like they use a different kind of switch for spacebar or whatever. Both of those leads went through perfectly. Very good. And I'm not bothering to fold the leads down. Um, I might have already said that. Um, there's plenty of space underneath the case. That's really not necessary here. All right. This part is done. And then, last but not least, this left control. And he lined up perfectly. As long as I have the board out and the iron is hot, I'll just do a little visual inspection to see if anybody else needs to be reflowed or if there are any cracks in the traces. Doesn't really look like anything. I'm seeing a couple though that are interesting, like this guy, what's that shift? Um, where it looks like it was reflowed, or sorry, it has some flux on it here. Um, but all that looks fine, and then all the the logic components up top. You know, there are a couple caps that are Rubicon caps. They all look perfectly fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the next thing I need to do, really, is um, attach its USB cable back to it. And... Um, make sure everything works because if there's anything that doesn't work now is the opportune time to fix it um, though it does come apart very very easily um, cool so that's done I'm wondering how loose are these these are pretty tight I was trying to decide if these should be soldered down but I really think they're fine just sitting there all right so there's that that's done solder's done all of our little scraps of wick and throw them away. Turn off the iron. Um, cool. So that little repair is complete, sort of. I still need to, I would like, I want it to be perfect, so I would like to find F13 and through 14 or 13 14 15 switches so those keys will work because i want it to fully work but um so that's done this underboard is mostly clean um let me take the camera the right out here um these are the the piece of plastic clamshell they're clean i spent a while scrubbing them down with like uh, alcohol pads and q-tips so they're done um and then my office has a sink in it, yes, which is kind of weird, but um, I spent a while washing out all the keys and letting them soak in some warm soapy water and all that good stuff. Um, so they're probably done. I'll pull those out and dry them off and make sure everything looks good, but um, otherwise this keyboard should be good to go. Alright, so we're back again. Uh, I just connected this um, to my Linux box and ran a tool that lets me check all the scan codes and I determined unfortunately that F11, numpad equal, and numpad 6 are not working. Everything else is perfectly fine including the keys that I repaired. So I, I'm gonna pop them off and see I don't know if I can see anything that looks weird. Um, you know really F13, 14, and 15 were the only keys I could spare to swap in replacements. Um, you know, on 
on an old Mac, I don't really use the numpad very often. F11, I don't really use that often. So if they just don't work, that's no big deal. But I figured I would at least try and desolder them, remove them, look at them, see if, I don't know, something. Um, <clears throat> so that is all I'm gonna do. I went ahead and marked them. So equals six and F11. Um, so let's go ahead and get to desoldering. I don't know if this is a coincidence or what, but um, the leads for six and a couple other keys were not bent flat. So I don't know if that's something that happens in the manufacturing process that just didn't happen for these keys or what, but sort of an interesting little thing I noticed. Okay. It should be sufficiently loosened. Let's see if we can get any indicators. Um, and you know what? I could even use a multimeter and do the fancy thing and see if the buttons work. Okay, so these I suspect will be a little bit harder to get out just because they're tight placement. Alright. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Not all the way on solder. You're not all the way on solder. We'll see if I can just reflow around the pad. That'll do it. I think that did it. Come on. Here we go. does beep test continuity, but it kind of sucks. So hopefully I can get that working. Because I don't want to have to see it get stuck on this diode test. There we go. So Try and test it. <sighs> Nothing. Dead switch. Uh oh. Well, I shorted the probes. Huh. Let's try it the other way around. Okay, so you just don't work. How about you? <sighs> you do work. You know what? I should have paid attention to which ones these came out of. Whoops. Okay. 
Oh, come on. Kind of hard to do this without clips. That's how slow this meter is. All right, so you do work. How about you? Oh, are you stuck? Let's try it out. A third hand would be really helpful. You are shorted. That's mildly unexpected. Let's see if I just actuated a whole bunch. Make any difference? Oh, that's wacky. So if I go to resistance, it says we have a dead short. If I push the button, it says you know, 0 0.3 ohms, 0 0.2 ohms. What? So if I release, overload, you know, wide open, close, dead short. open, dead short. I think you stick. Interesting. Interesting. So let's go back to the one that I thought was dead. Let's see what he says. That's why I said I don't really like the beep continuity tester on here. It's okay. So wide open, push the button, still wide open. Yeah. No difference on the other. Interesting. And the one that works. So he says. Wide open. That's short. Wide open. Dead short. Okay, so you're fine. Then the question is, okay, between F11, the keypad, and, well, F11, keypad 6, and equals, uh, where should the working key go? Um, and right now my inclination is to put it on F11 because I have a minus and a 6 elsewhere. And on old Max, I don't really use any software that needs specifically keypad equals or keypad six. So um, the working key, I'm gonna put back on F11. And I'm just gonna go ahead and solder that in place. All right. And then I'm really curious if there's any chance that Six an equal share to trace. No, it really does not look like they share a trace at all. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's just wild. I don't know. I don't know, man. So let's go back to this one. Um, so wide open. Nothing. No response. And these have clips. 
they can be disassembled. I don't know if it's worth the trouble. Yeah, this one's reading perfectly fine. on equals and that well it's kind of indifferent to be honest I'll put them on six if I can get it to play nice no Bentley Um, okay, well, let's test F11 and 6, and I'll see if I can take this guy apart and maybe fix it. I'm um, failing that, I can still pop it in there and just have a, an equals key that does nothing. So, I will be back. Okay, well, um... We just finished testing, and F11 works now, um, but 6 does not. Um, and what I did was I cut a little piece of shot solder into just a little U shape that I could hold um, and, you know, manually shorten pads for keys. And um, I got nothing out of either equal sign or 6. So... Everything else works perfectly fine, including the keys around them, you know, that they're joined to. So, I don't know if there's a, a crack in solder mask somewhere, and you know, or if, you know, the, the Something about sending those keys on the microcontroller just isn't working. I, I really don't know, but I mean, it's not really. It's far from a deal breaker because, like I said, oops, and that key is over there. Um, so you know, even though this other key doesn't work, um, I'm gonna pop it back in. I'm not gonna solder it down, but I will pop it back in. Um, and I'll just have to remember that equal sign and six just don't work um, for whatever reason, which is kind of a bummer. Um, because, you know, I want this keyboard to be perfectly functional. Um, but, yeah, um, I guess I'll start reassembling it and put it all back together. And um, we'll see how it does. Moment of truth time. Got the Maxence keyboard all cleaned up and put back together. Um, got my blue and white hooked up with a monitor <coughs> on DVI. I'm pretty sure that the monitor is set to DVI input. I wasn't able to get the selector to come up, but let's see. Um, <coughs> first things first, let's see if the power button on the keyboard works. Ta-da! Very good sign. <clears throat> Heard a hard drive spin up. You got a chime. Hopefully it's a very quiet one. These speakers are turned down. <clears throat> it might take us a while to get a picture. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Oh. Zoom into the camera here. Happy Mac, 9.2. Got that beautiful blue and white wavy background. So this might be running a 
a stock install of 9.2. I don't really remember what's on here. Um, yeah, I do have a Sonnet uh, G4 500 in here with the G4 extensions installed. Um, okay, let's see. It's got the date and time wrong and it hasn't picked it off of NTP. Let's fix that first. Server options set time now. <coughs> It's on the network. Let's see. TCPIP. It's got a valid IP address. Let's try synchronizing it again. There we go. Boom. 8.46 p.m. 11.29.2020. Set an Apple system profiler. 1 gig RAM. 8 megs dish cache. It just views the keyboard as an Apple Extended, but we'll see what it says under USB. Yeah, PowerPC G4, 500 megahertz, devices and volume. Yeah, so it shows up, <coughs> let me move the tripod a little bit closer here. So it shows up as Strongman Keyboard and Strongman Keyboard Hub. Um, so it's an Alcor Micro, I don't know, there it is. And then I have a standard Apple USB Pro mouse hanging off the, uh, the USB port there. Um, caps lock works, num lock doesn't work because it doesn't really get used that way. And then of course scroll lock wouldn't light up because, um, whoa, those keys are not in use. Um, but yeah, there it is. Feels absolutely tremendously wonderful to type on. Here, I pulled up uh, good old keycaps. We can do a quick run through. Ooh, F8 sticks. I need to watch that. Oops, I forgot hitting F12. I've got configured to eject the optical drive. <laughs> uh oh. Interesting. Okay, there we go. Now it's reporting six is being stuck. Nine works, six works. I knew equal doesn't work. Six, unstick yourself. That's really weird. Let's quit and reopen keycaps. And see if six can unstick itself. Mm. That is no good. I'm curious, where's uh, yeah, Stickies works? Is it just gonna dump sixes in? Interesting, so six doesn't work again. One, two, three works, four, five works, seven, eight, nine works, slash, asterisk, plus, or minus plus, period, zero. Well, this inner wouldn't work in a sticky note. That six is reporting as being jammed down. That's wild. Okay, well, I might need to work on that some more. Um, but, yeah. 
There we go. Oh, I'm curious. I can't remember what GPU I have in here. I think it's a Radeon 9200. Uh, it's been a while. Display card. Well, RV280 with 120 megs of VRAM. I'm pretty sure that's a Radeon 9200. Let's see if ATI displays works. Nope. It almost never works. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and based on the icons, I've got lots of ATI drivers and crap, so that's what I was working on last time. But, hey, um, the MacSense keyboard works. It's awesome to type on. It sounds great. So now I've got a, a banging Mac OS 9 box. Woo! Well, with a even more banging keyboard. Which, I very much want to try and find another one of these now. But that's it for now.